In the aftermath of World War II, a new generation of social psychologists conducted several experiments that seemed to confirm the worst facets of human nature. In the Stanford Prison Experiment, for instance, volunteers were randomly assigned to the role of either guard or prisoner, then kept in a mock prison in the basement of Stanford University. Over the course of a few days, the story goes, the guards came to abuse and degrade the prisoners, seemingly proving that good people will turn bad if they are put in a bad situation. In reality, however, the psychologist in charge of the experiment, Philip Zimbardo, drilled the guards from day one, pressuring them to behave as sadistically as possible. Many of the guards didn't want to do it. But then Zimbardo said that he needed this behavior to get the right results. His research assistant told the students that they wanted to go to the press and say, look, prisons are horrible environments. Let's reform the whole system. Similarly, the Robbers Cave experiment, another study from the 1960s, sought to pit children against one another to show how, when unsupervised, children would act as described in William Golding's famous novel, Lord of the Flies. The reality? Researchers had to go to great lengths to turn the kids against one another. For example, they set up only competitive games in which there would be a clear winner and a clear loser, and they defaced the kids' belongings to make them think the other team was after them. Finally, in Stanley Milgram's infamous shock machine experiment, pairs of people were given the roles of teacher and learner, and the teacher was told to administer increasingly greater shocks to the learner if they answered questions incorrectly. Although the shocks were not real, and the learner was a research collaborator, many teachers continued to administer what they thought were practically lethal doses of electricity. The experiment gained fame for showing what the philosopher Hannah Arendt has called the banality of evil. But later, it was found that the majority of teachers in the experiment did not really believe they were administering shocks. The few who thought the shocks were real usually stopped the experiment before it could escalate. 